Hello, and welcome to New Economic Thinking. When the common currency was established in Europe in the late 1990s, one of the primary conceits behind it was that the longer that all of the countries uh, together lived under a common currency, the less economic uh, diversions would exist amongst the various countries. Of course, that hasn't proved to be the case as we've seen over the last few years. Uh, Alberto Bota from the University, uh, Mediterranean University of Reggio Calabria, uh, you are in a sense um, at the heart of this, Reggio Calabria has been uh, an area which has long suffered from uh, higher rates of unemployment and lower levels of prosperity than much of, uh, else of Europe. Indeed, Italy itself is a bit of a microcosm of the entire European Union because you have a core area in the north which is quite prosperous and then you have a poor south, if you like, a, a southern periphery which uh, would um, um, be act, acts a bit like a, a so-called uh, periphery country on, on its own. So um, I'm interested to hear what you think. Has, has the euro actually been a, a success for, the, uh, for, for areas like Reggio Calabria? Well, I guess that uh, Reggio Calabria is really a good example of uh, what, when we think about a dualistic economy, uh, Italy and the southern region of Italy and Calabria as well, Reggio Calabria, uh, provide a good example of um, a dualistic economy because, uh, as you were saying, there is a pretty well-developed north uh, well integrated with uh, the most developed regions uh, in the Eurozone and the, the European Union, whilst the South is very much lagging behind, uh, and it's a uh, pretty long time there isn't uh, uh, appreciable growth records in the South. And this is why uh, many unemployment problems, uh, development problems, are concentrated in the South. So, actually, there are many forms of periphery in the Eurozone, and clearly, south of Italy is one of them. And uh, uh, now the point is that uh, um, before, when there were, uh, um, let's say, national currencies uh, and there were more autonomous fiscal policies, uh, there were much more instruments in, in, in order to favor the growth process in uh, underdeveloped regions. And I think you hit on a key point there because a fiscal policy, it seems to me, is the best means of reducing intra-regional disparities. For example, in the United States, where we have a, a fiscal federalism, um, you, you can see that there are poorer states, like say in Arkansas or West Virginia, vis-a-vis -vis California and New York, but we do have a fiscal transfer union which does help to eliminate these uh, disparities and, 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 and mitigate the problems you've described for Italy. I absolutely agree with you, because uh, um, monetary policy, of course, is important, but it is useless in order to uh, eliminate the regional disparities. Uh, it is important in order to uh, fit the growth process, but the growth process in that case mainly concentrates in developed regions, not in underdeveloped ones. Underdeveloped ones mean, uh, needs other, other instruments and fiscal policies fundamental. Uh, let's say industrial policy. Industrial policy, which is a part of, of, of fiscal policy, of course. Um, a specific form of interventions uh, uh, conceived for underdeveloped regions uh, and unfortunately right now in the Eurozone and the European Union as a whole there is a strong concern on that, on, on that kind of policy. Figure out that the uh, European Commission budget is more or less 1% of uh, the European Union GDP, so it is... And there's no supranational fiscal authority uh, which would allow for this, uh, this transfer union and uh, of course you have a lot of countries, uh, notably Germany, who object to expanding the, the fiscal transfer role, although um, without that I don't see who you get a real United States of Europe. Exactly, that's the point. And we uh, absolutely need it because otherwise uh, I guess there isn't much more possibility for uh, um, underdeveloped regions in the Eurozone, south of Italy is a case of it, um, there aren't much more possibility to restore growth, to uh, grow outside the, the, the crisis. So I really think uh, it should be important trying to um, go ahead to the, uh, on, the, on the political process, trying to create a um, fully fledged uh, European political union because the, because the alternative, of course, is that you get uh, much more substantial uh, extreme reactions against the common currency project. Of course. And in that regard, I think Italy is a very interesting country because 
uh, in contrast to, say, uh, Spain or Ireland or Portugal, uh, there is actually a, a substantial anti-Euro political sentiment in Italy, uh, even though the, the current government is, is pro-Euro, uh, led by Matteo Renzi. You do have a substantial amount of the population, I'd say in excess of 25%, which is now turning its support towards anti-Euro parties. And if the Renzi administration doesn't succeed in re-establishing this growth dynamic, then there is a risk that the Italian uh, government may take a very decidedly anti-Euro direction in the future. Yeah, I absolutely agree. The point is that uh, mm -hmm. Euro in itself, it is not the problem. Uh, the problem is the Eurozone design, institutional design. The idea of creating a European Central Bank without a federal budget, without any possibility to run fiscal policies in the US and in the Eurozone through um, a federal budget, and therefore giving rise to implicit fiscal transfer from a developed region to underdeveloped ones. And so, therefore, the public uh, may think that the euro is the problem, whilst it is not. It is how the uh, eurozone building has been uh, uh, constructed. So that's the problem. And therefore, we have to reform, of course. I do agree that we have to reform the eurozone. We have to reform the European Union. We have to create uh, a federal political entity uh, having the possibility to issue euro bonds, uh, to run fiscal policies, uh, to be, let's say, monetarily sovereign, uh, it would be simply a mess uh, trying to solve the problem by eliminating the euro. It would be addressing the, uh, a symbol, let's say, of, of the problems, but not the core of the problem. But how realistic is it to establish a, a, a fiscal transfer union? Uh, this is a, a, um, I, I honestly think there isn't any way out. There isn't any way out. There isn't any real alternative. Uh, so I think there are small steps uh, in this direction. Uh, of course, there is still a long way to go. Mm -hmm. There is a long path to be, to be done, to be realized in order to reach, in the end, let's say, a sort of uh, United States of Europe or uh, a fully developed Eurozone uh, monetary area. But I guess that uh, some political institutions are getting convinced that there isn't any uh, reliable alternative. Uh, if we only think about a sort, some sort of uh, Greece exit from the Eurozone, one immediately realized that it, it would create a mess and it would create much, uh, many more problems. So your, in your assessment, for example, if we had a so-called Brexit where Greece were to exit the Eurozone, uh, that there is a, do you, do you think that that could be ring fenced or do you think the contagion would start to spread to other countries? I, I, I think that contagion will be uh, problematic because, uh, as you know, I mean, financial market has a strong power, has a, um, are very strengthful, and therefore uh, I'm not sure that uh, um, political authorities will be capable to contain uh, contagion effect and any sort of speculation emerging on, 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 uh, on financial market in case one country of the uh, Eurozone will eventually exit. And the, the Italian uh, government seems to be one of the, the few uh, entities which recognizes that. I, I, th I don't think it was the current administration, but the previous administration where uh, Piercarlo uh, Paduan was yeah. the finance minister. He, very early on, uh, made some fairly strong remarks supportive of Greece and saying that there had to be resolution of the, of the uh, Greek crisis, which is in marked contrast to the seeming um, relaxed attitude of the, the German authorities, yeah. who all seem to be willing Greece to exit uh, the Eurozone. I do agree with the Italian uh, um, uh, minister, yeah. yeah, with the Italian perspective, because I do think that in the end, should Greece exit from the Eurozone, uh, immediately financial turbulences will start, will emerge, uh, and it will be pretty hard to uh, tame them. So I, I'm not convinced that uh, uh, a Greek exit from the Eurozone will not be problematic. I do think it will create uh, a, a, a huge amount of problems and difficulties inside the Eurozone. So. Um, we have to try um, whatever possible in order to avoid this eventuality to take place in the end.
So if you were uh, in a position of power uh, in the uh, European <laughs> Union, what would be the policies that you would advocate in order to avoid that, that kind of a, an outcome? Well, my idea is that uh, exactly when we were talking about the south of Italy, the, the best strategy would be to implement a strong industrial policy in peripheral countries, Greece is one of them, in order to favor the recovery. Uh, and you, uh, you would achieve that through fiscal policy, I seem to be yeah. clarifying. Mm -hmm. uh, a sort of centralized fiscal policy. We have to recognize that fiscal policy should be implemented um, by the center of the Eurozone, by the center of European Union. And what's the institution that could do that, given that we don't have a, a supranational treasury? Do you think that the ECB should be doing that, or do you need, a, do you um, you need another mechanism? We have to... Um, Probably the, the, one of the most important institutions right now could be the European Investment Bank. Trying to push the European Investment Bank in order to uh, support investment in peripheral economies. Which in fact, uh, coincidentally, is, is a proposal that the current Greek finance minister, Yanis Varoufakis, has proposed. In, 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 in this moment, since that we don't have any central fiscal authority, we need to rely on the European Investment Bank. Uh, which in a way was created at the very beginning as an instrument to favor convergence among differently developed regions. And it is consistent, it's enshrined in the Maastricht Treaty, so you wouldn't be doing anything exactly. illegal. Exactly, exactly, exactly. It is the, uh, let's say, most viable way right now. And I think that we have to uh, run this way if we want to, first of all, help Greece to recover and many other peripheral zones to recover from the recession. And of course, there are also lots of empirical evidence saying that there isn't any possibility to um, pay the debt back through austerity measures. We have, to, uh, we have to grow if we want to repay our debt. And therefore, the, 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 let's say the uh, most useful strategy right now should be, from my perspective, to implement a strong investment project, a strong investment program in, uh, uh, in peripheral economies like Greece in order to favor uh, their economy to recover. And, and, and the softer interpretation perhaps of the Stability and Growth Pact, I note, for example, that the Italians have consistently indicated that the SGP, it, uh, the, these um, numbers, 3% uh, budget deficit on an annual basis, 60% total public debt to GDP ratios, these are quote unquote guidelines. Uh, the Courts have recently ruled that their interpretation of these uh, measures being uh, uh, guidelines as opposed to being yeah, yeah. fixed in stone seems to be gaining um, more gradual acceptance. And perhaps with a more flexible interpretation of the Stability and Growth Pact, um, it is likely that we can get this more active fiscal policy at a national level that you would like to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I absolutely think that we should adopt a uh, more flexible interpretation of the Growth and Stability um, Pact. Um, what, is, what is not clear to me is that uh, we apply exactly the same rule and we try to have uh, um, a fiscal uh, uh, balance or even a surplus, even in countries in which the debt to GDP ratio, for instance, is pretty low. I mean, it is a sort of uh, mantra, it is a sort of uh, common belief applied to all the countries. Uh, Whilst we should think about a, a, a sort of fiscal coordination in which we have some sort of fiscal expansion in countries in which the debt to GDP ratio is low, and, uh, and try to think about some fiscal consolidation in countries in which uh, debt problems are much more relevant. The point is that also in countries like Germany, in which the uh, economic conditions are pretty safe and solid, and which the debt to GDP ratio is under control, or, or in other Eurozone countries, um, there is the idea and the belief that uh, the public budget should be balanced. No deficit at all, because deficit is the evil. And from my personal point of view, uh, this is a tremendous mistake because... Uh, this is a so-called fallacy of composition argument. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Because you don't recognize that there are huge externalities among Eurozone and European countries. And therefore, even though if you impose uh, some sort of austerity measures in countries in which the debt ratio is pretty high, you can, of course, run fiscal uh, uh, expansionary policy in countries in which conditions are, um, are better. 
and therefore, why not to, uh, to do this way? Uh, because this would help a, a, a much more pronounced growth process in Germany, of course, will, will help also Italy to recover from, from the recession. Or maybe you can start looking at deficits in a very different way and, 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 and view them more as economic barometers and that maybe that the, the large deficit is a symptom of a sick economy uh, that uh, requires the, the, the stimulus for a long period of time in order to recover and that that's the um, focus on a monomaniacal focus on a, on a number or a, is, is the wrong way to go about it, that the, the deficits will improve as and when the economy starts to improve. Exactly, exactly. I, I, I do fully agree. And on top of this, we have to also rediscover another important point, which is the coordination between monetary and fiscal policy, because right now, since that, we have the quantitative easing in place, uh, and therefore we have very low interest rate. It is important to exploit this chance and therefore try to implement uh, fiscal policies, expansionary fiscal policies, uh, which will not impact uh, badly on the sustainability of the public debt, because fortunately there is the uh, European Central Bank intervening on, on financial markets and buying uh, lots of government bonds. And in this case, it is in this case that fiscal expansion is uh, uh, Powerful. It, it is, although there, there seems to be a built-in contradiction to the uh, European Central Bank's uh, proposals because in the past they have said uh, we are prepared to backstop the bonds of the national sovereign governments, but only under condition that they continue fiscal consolidation. Yeah. So in a, in a sense, you have uh, one hand acting in the exact opposite direction from the other. Uh, because, if, of course, if you are imposing uh, fiscal austerity, even as the European Central Bank buys the bonds, um, the, the likelihood is that the economic growth will slow and the deficits will actually become larger, not smaller. Exactly, exactly. The result will be um, nothing, basically, because I do believe that we have to discover a very important concept coming from Keynes, which is the liquidity trap. Uh, we, of course, it is important the quantitative easing introduced and implemented by the European Central Bank. But it, I guess it will not provide enough growth support. So, therefore, we have to um, coordinate it with uh, um, uh, much more expansive fiscal policies, which is absolutely sustainable given monetary condition right now. Yes, one hopes that, uh, in, in fact, you will start to see an improvement in, in the uh, fiscal uh, policies being adopted by the various governments. What's happening in Greece doesn't give one a lot of encouragement, but perhaps um, it, it will be the renewal of, of crisis conditions in Greece which uh, cause policymakers to wake up and uh, realize the importance of the policy proposal that you're putting forward today. Alberto Borta, thank you very much for joining me thank today. Thank you, do. Really appreciate uh, hearing your insights.